If it's true, that would be great. Oh, hi. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> My wife and I were just talking about when, when we get to find out uh, what's actually happening so we can all go back to living our lives. Because like all of you, I'm sure, I'm just looking forward to the glorious day when this crisis is over and I can rip off my mask and go into a crowded room full of elderly people and lick them all. And what gets me is that President Trump should have seen this COVID crisis coming. We're now learning that as far back as January, the president's intelligence briefing book repeatedly cited the virus threat. Well, there's your problem. Those are three of Trump's least favorite words, intelligence, briefing, and book. If they really wanted him to pay attention, they should have called it his daily pornographic hamburger fire truck. For a guy who doesn't know what he's talking about, Trump sure does talk a lot. He was at it again yesterday, but not without a little drama, because in one day, the White House scheduled, canceled, then rescheduled the press briefing. Who changes their mind that often? It's a press briefing, Don, not a wedding vow. Trump was asked about his suggestion last week that people inject disinfectant to cure the coronavirus. Maryland and other states, Governor Larry Hogan specifically said, they've seen a spike in people uh, using disinfectant after your comments last week. I know you said they were sarcastic. I, I can't but imagine take, why. I can't imagine why. Yeah. Take any responsibility? No, I don't. No, I die? can't imagine. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine why those people followed your advice. It's a real mystery. Specifically, Nancy Drew and the case of bleach she drank after Trump told her to. Then, the president shifted blame to his longtime nemesis. Fill in the blank. It could have been stopped and it could have been stopped short. But somebody a long time ago, it seems, decided not to do it that way. And the whole world is suffering because of it. Yes, someone should have stopped it. A long time ago, and I don't want to say where, let's just say in a galaxy far, far away. That bad guy had a ventilator on his face. He knew something was up. Now, at the briefing, the Trump administration unveiled what they called their blueprint for increasing testing capacity. But it leaves the onus on states to develop their own plans. So their plan is make someone else come up with a plan. And... And I'm being told we have a copy of the Trump blueprint. In fact, the federal government's blueprint described the federal government as the supplier of last resort. Well, that is inspiring leadership, just like Braveheart. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. Anyway, that's the blueprint. Good luck. I'm a fighter of last resort. Then reporters grilled Vice President Mike Pence about why the number of tests has been so much lower than what he said they would be almost two months ago. Mr. Vice President, back in early March, you said we'd be at four million uh, tests by the following week. We're just now got there in the last few days. What lessons have you learned from the mistakes over the last uh, you know, month and a half or so? John, I appreciate the question, but it represents uh, a misunderstanding. Uh, on your part, and uh, and frankly, the a lot of people in the public's part about the difference between having a test versus the ability to actually process the test. Well, okay, but if you don't process the tests, then you don't get any results. There's a reason why when you take a pregnancy test, two minutes later, it doesn't say, congratulations, it's P. But I don't know why we're listening to that guy at all, because today... Pence visited the Mayo Clinic, where he was the only person not wearing a face mask. Oh, my God. You are the head of the coronavirus task force, and you're in the hospital, and you're the only one without a mask. Hold on. I've got a mask for you right here. It's not like the vice president didn't know. The hospital has a strict policy requiring all visitors to wear masks and tweeted after Pence's visit, Mayo Clinic had informed the vice president of the masking policy prior to his arrival today. Wow, that must have been harsh for Mike Pence to get roasted by his idol, Mayo. While Pence was saying it and spraying it, Trump had a coronavirus meeting with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, seen here estimating the size of his brain. Right off the bat, Trump offered some crazy ideas to fight the virus, like banning entire countries from entering Florida. 
Look well, that'll at be cutting off Brazil. I mean, you're going to well, not necessarily cut them off, off, but it's just if if you're going to fly to Miami, then the airline should give you the Abbott test and then put you on the plane. But would you ever want to ban certain countries? If they're if if they were seeding the United States, I think you'll you should let ban us know. them. You'll for be sure. watching and you'll let us know. What? What do you mean you'll let us know? Ron DeSantis will let the president of the United States know if he wants to ban a country. That's not how this works. I don't trust Florida with international policy. I barely trust Florida with Florida. Don't ask his advice. Doesn't Trump know asking a Floridian for advice is Florida's leading cause of death? And then DeSantis boasted about Florida's success. His secret, having Jared Kushner on speed dial. Jared, he had a team of going about, like, figuring out where the ventilators would be needed. So when, when everyone was talking about 40,000 ventilators in New York, I'm in contact with Jared about Florida, about New York, and he was saying, well, they're not going to need that. And I was like, look, I, I actually, I agree with your numbers. I don't think we need any ventilators in Florida right now. Maybe things will change. So they were ready at a moment's notice to get the ventilators wherever they need. But they were absolutely ready, willing, and able to do that once the data suggested they were they Look, I'm not saying DeSantis is an ass kisser. I'm just saying, in a pinch, he could use Kushner's butt as a ventilator. Oh, hey, there's news from the world of air travel. There's still a world of air travel. I thought the airlines had just let all the planes return to the wild. Turns out, not only are the airlines flying, they're still crowding people on board. Look at this recent footage of a flight from New York to Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, of course, that's back in coach, in first class you get coronavirus on your hot towel. The passenger who took this video tweeted that she'd never felt less safe or cared for in my entire life. Obviously, she has never flown on Spirit Airlines. When another customer asked an airline employee about the crowded conditions, she was told that if the airline sells 150 seats, they will board 150 seats. It's a business. Yes, yes, we noticed it was a business. Back when you started charging us an extra $70 for blood circulation. But some airlines are trying to adapt to the coronavirus world. For example, the folks at JetBlue have said they're going to be the first U.S. airline to require passenger face masks. JetBlue's chief operating officer explained that this is the new flying etiquette. Replacing the old flying etiquette, none. And JetBlue isn't the only airline doing virus prevention because AirAsia has launched a new flight attendant uniform with long sleeves, face mask, and hood. So apparently now your flight crew is manned by a posse of breakdancers from Chernobyl. Air travel is the least of our problems, though, because Americans could see meat shortages by the end of the week. Apparently, outbreaks are forcing the closure of some of the country's biggest slaughterhouses for safety reasons. You know it's bad if slaughterhouses are doing something for safety reasons. They're pretty tough places. There's a reason they don't call them cuddle houses. According to the chairman of Tyson Foods, Mike Tyson, I'm going to say, supply chain issues mean that millions of pounds of meat will disappear. A phrase that's actually inscribed over the doorframe of every Arby's. And the shortage has already begun. Almost a third of the U.S. pork capacity is down. And it doesn't help that Arby's just introduced their new sandwich, the U.S. pork capacity. Fortunately, this problem came to the attention of America's number one meat fan because today President Trump ordered U.S. meat plants to stay open amid the pandemic. Wow, he really acted quickly to save the meats. Maybe they should have put that in the initial intelligence briefing. Mr. President, hundreds of thousands of Americans could be infected with this deadly virus. And some of those people make your hamburgers. Quick, ramp up the testing and fire up the grill. Of course, I don't know why anyone is surprised by this. That old crone tried to warn us of the coming meat shortage years ago. Where's the beef? We have a great show for you tonight. I'll be talking to the lovely and talented Jake Gyllenhaal. But when we return, meanwhile...